flywheel energy storage works by accelerating a rotor to a very high speed and maintaining the energy in the system as rotational energy. When energy is extracted from the system, the flywheel's rotational speed is reduced as a consequence of the principle of conservation of energy, adding energy to the system correspondingly results in an increase in the speed of the flywheel. Most FES systems use electricity to accelerate and decelerate the flywheel, but devices that directly use mechanical energy are being developed. Since FES can be used to absorb or release electrical energy such devices may sometimes be incorrectly and confusingly described as either mechanical or inertia batteries. Advanced FES systems have rotors made of high-strength carbon fiber composites, suspended by magnetic bearings, and spinning at speeds from 20,000 to over 50,000 revolutions per minute in a vacuum enclosure. Such flywheels can come up to speed in a matter of minutes, reaching their energy capacity much more quickly than some other forms of storage. Main Components a typical system consists of a rotor suspended by bearings inside a vacuum chamber to reduce friction, connected to a combination electric motor and electric generator. First-generation flywheel energy storage systems use a large steel flywheel rotating on mechanical bearings. Newer systems use carbon fiber composite rotors that have a higher tensile strength than steel and are an order of magnitude less heavy. Magnetic bearings are sometimes used instead of mechanical bearings to reduce friction. Other components are hub and shaft. Possible future use of superconducting bearings The expense of refrigeration led to the early dismissal of low-temperature superconductors for use in magnetic bearings. However, high-temperature superconductor bearings may be economical and could possibly extend the time energy could be stored economically. Hybrid bearing systems are most likely to see use first. High-temperature superconductor bearings have historically had problems providing the lifting forces necessary for the larger designs, but can easily provide a stabilizing force. Therefore, in hybrid bearings, permanent magnets support the load and high-temperature superconductors are used to stabilize it. The reason superconductors can work while stabilizing the load is because they are perfect tire magnets. If the rotor tries to drift off-center, a restoring force due to flux pinning restores it. This is known as the magnetic stiffness of the bearing. Rotational axis vibration can occur due to low stiffness and damping, which are inherent problems of superconducting magnets preventing the use of completely superconducting magnetic bearings for flywheel applications. Since flux pinning is the important factor for providing the stabilizing and lifting force, the HTSC can be made much more easily for FES than for other uses. HTSC powders can be formed into arbitrary shapes so long as flux pinning is strong, an ongoing challenge that has to be overcome before superconductors can provide the full lifting force for an FES system is finding a way to suppress the decrease of levitation force and the gradual fall of rotor during operation caused by the flux creep of SC material. Physical Characteristics general compared with other ways to store electricity, FES systems have long lifetimes, high energy density, and large maximum power output. The energy efficiency of flywheels can be as high as 90%. Typical capacities range from 3 kilowatt hours to 133 kilowatt hours. Rapid charging of a system occurs in less than 15 minutes. The high energy densities often cited with flywheels can be a little misleading as commercial systems built have much lower energy density, for example 11 watt-hours per kilogram or 40 kilojoules per kilogram. Energy density The maximum energy density of a flywheel rotor is mainly dependent on two factors, the first being the rotor's geometry, and the second being the properties of the material being used. For single material isotropic rotors this relationship can be expressed as where the variables are defined as follows. 
kinetic energy of the rotor J, the rotor's mass kilogram, the rotor's geometric shape factor dimensionless, the tensile strength of the material par, the material's density kilogram per cubic meter, geometry the highest possible value for the shape factor of a flywheel rotor is, which can only be achieved by the theoretical constant stress disk geometry. A constant thickness disk geometry has a shape factor of, while for a rod of constant thickness the value is, a thin cylinder has a shape factor of, material properties for energy storage purposes, materials with high strength and low density are desirable. For this reason, composite materials are frequently being used in advanced flywheels. The strength to density ratio of the material can be expressed in the units watt hour per kilogram, and values greater than 400 watt hours per kilogram can be achieved by certain composite materials. Composite rotors Several modern flywheel rotors are made from composite materials. Examples include the Smart Energy 25 flywheel from Beacon Power Corporation and the Power Through flywheel from Philips Service Industries. For these rotors, the relationship between material properties, geometry and energy density can be expressed by using a weighed average approach. Tensile strength and failure modes One of the primary limits to flywheel design is the tensile strength of the material used for the rotor. Generally speaking, the stronger the disk, the faster it may be spun, and the more energy the system can store. When the tensile strength of a composite flywheel's outer binding cover is exceeded, the binding cover will fracture, followed by the wheel shattering as the outer wheel compression is lost around the entire circumference, releasing all of its stored energy at once. This is commonly referred to as flywheel explosion, since wheel fragments can reach kinetic energy, comparable to that of a bullet. Composite materials that are wound and glued in layers tend to disintegrate quickly, first into small diameter filaments that entangle and slow each other, and then into red-hot powder, instead of large chunks of high-velocity shrapnel as can occur with a cast metal flywheel. For a cast metal flywheel, the failure limit is the binding strength of the grain boundaries of the polycrystalline molded metal. Aluminum in particular suffers from fatigue and can develop microfractures due to repeated low energy stretching. Angular forces may cause portions of a metal flywheel to bend outward and begin dragging on the outer containment vessel, or to separate completely and bounce randomly around the interior. The rest of the flywheel is now severely unbalanced, which may lead to rapid bearing failure from vibration and sudden shock fracturing of large segments of the flywheel. Traditional flywheel systems require strong containment vessels as a safety precaution, which increases the total mass of the device. The energy release from failure can be dampened with a gelatinous or encapsulated liquid in a housing lining, which will boil and absorb the energy of destruction. Still, many customers of large-scale flywheel energy storage systems prefer to have them embedded in the ground to hold any material that might escape the containment vessel. Energy storage efficiency Flywheel energy storage systems using mechanical bearings can lose 20% to 50% of their energy in two hours. Much of the friction responsible for this energy loss results from the flywheel changing orientation due to the rotation of the Earth. This change in orientation is resisted by the gyroscopic forces exerted by the flywheel's angular momentum, thus exerting a force against the mechanical bearings. This force increases friction. This can be avoided by aligning the flywheel's axis of rotation parallel to that of the Earth's axis of rotation. Conversely, flywheels with magnetic bearings and high vacuum can maintain 97% mechanical efficiency and 85% round-trip efficiency. Effects of angular momentum in vehicles When used in vehicles, flywheels also act as gyroscopes. 
since their angular momentum is typically of a similar order of magnitude as the forces acting on the moving vehicle. This property may be detrimental to the vehicle's handling characteristics while turning or driving on rough ground. Driving onto the side of a sloped embankment may cause wheels to partially lift off the ground as the flywheel opposes sideways tilting forces. On the other hand, this property could be utilized to keep the car balanced so as to keep it from rolling over during sharp turns. When a flywheel is used entirely for its effects on the attitude of a vehicle, rather than for energy storage, it is called a reaction wheel or a control moment gyroscope. The resistance of angular tilting can be almost completely removed by mounting the flywheel within an appropriately applied set of gimbals allowing the flywheel to retain its original orientation without affecting the vehicle. This doesn't avoid the complication of gimbal lock, and so a compromise between the number of gimbals and the angular freedom is needed. The center axle of the flywheel acts as a single gimbal, and if aligned vertically, allows for the 360 degrees of your inner horizontal plane. However, for instance driving uphill requires a second pitch gimbal, and driving on the side of a sloped embankment requires a third roll gimbal. Full motion gimbals although the flywheel itself may be of a flat ring shape, a free movement gimbal mounting inside a vehicle requires a spherical volume for the flywheel to freely rotate within. Left to its own, a spinning flywheel in a vehicle would slowly process following the Earth's rotation and process further yet in vehicles that travel long distances over the Earth's curved spherical surface. A full-motion gimbal has additional problems of how to communicate power into and out of the flywheel. Since the flywheel could potentially flip completely over once a day, processing as the Earth rotates, full free rotation would require slip rings around each gimbal axis for power conductors, further adding to the design complexity. Limited motion gimbals to reduce space usage, the gimbal system may be of a limited movement design. Using shock absorbers to cushion sudden rapid motions within a certain number of degrees of out-of-plane angular rotation, and then gradually forcing the flywheel to adopt the vehicle's current orientation. This reduces the gimbal movement space around a ring-shaped flywheel from a full sphere to a short thickened cylinder, encompassing for example plus or minus 30 degrees of pitch and plus or minus 30 degrees of roll in all directions around the flywheel. Counterbalancing of angular momentum An alternative solution to the problem is to have two joined flywheels spinning synchronously in opposite directions. They would have a total angular momentum of zero and no gyroscopic effect. A problem with this solution is that when the difference between the momentum of each flywheel is anything other than zero the housing of the two flywheels would exhibit torque. Both wheels must be maintained at the same speed to keep the angular velocity at zero. Strictly speaking, the two flywheels would exert a huge torquing moment at the central point, trying to bend the axle. However, if the axle were sufficiently strong, no gyroscopic forces would have a net effect on the sealed container, so no torque would be noticed. To further balance the forces and spread out strain, a single large flywheel can be balanced by two half-size flywheels on each side, or the flywheels can be reduced in size to be a series of alternating layers spinning in opposite directions. However, this increases housing and bearing complexity. 